Welcome to the Brand Center Show where, oh wait, hang on, to the 365 Message Center Show where this episode is on brand uh, as brand ambassadors for the Brand Center. That's going to be at the theme of the show. No, episode 348, uh, we have a number of messages talking about the brand center, right? It's going to cut. Is it? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, two other messages, because we usually do things in threes, um, although that last one's going to be a combination of a number of messages. Uh, there's going to be capture with capitals used for... Verifying Anonymous Meeting Participants. Mm -hmm. Capital Capture. Uh, and lastly, uh, there's uh, some changes around copy and paste of references to Teams messages, which should tidy up the look and feel of our chat. 347, let's go. It's hard yeah. to correct you. You what? No, no, I'm I'm fine with that. I need correcting these days. I, I need correcting all the time. No, <laughs> I I'm usually the one going. What what episode is this? It's yeah. almost I will. Oh, I do. Top of mind right now as mm -hmm. we're talking about numbers, we have been highly encouraged to do something special for episode three six five. So <laughs> you know, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Right? I, um, I got several people when I was at TechCon 365. Yeah. They were like, you have to do something for a ep special episode. Do you think we could get TechCon to a sponsor? <laughs> maybe. Given it's their name. Or maybe that, even Microsoft 365. Yeah, sponsor. that would be great. So uh, for all of those listeners and watchers out there, if you have an idea of what we should do for episode 365 for the 365 uh, Mr. Center Show, uh, hit us up at show at 365mcs.com or in the comments down below on the video. Hit us up on socials at 365mcs on all the socials that matter. Tell us what we should do. We uh, Give us some ideas. Please. I mean, they've got 15 episodes to Sure, that, but, you know, yeah, it, some they may come up with some really you. great ideas, Daryl, that are oh, like, yeah, they, yeah. That, that we have to plan a really long time for. Ahead of time. Mm. So. What could yeah. we be doing in half a year's time? Half a year? Well, it's close to half a year. It's 18. 18 episodes away. Okay. 17? 17. Well, so? Not counting the, not counting the, um, the, the annual leave that you apply months. for that I still have to approve. Yeah. Anyway. I know. All right. Let's so, do it. So let's do it. Let's, what is it you say? I, I say, let's dive right in. Let's dive that, right is in. Is that my You do say phrase? that. Let's dive right in. Uh, we're starting off with uh, some messages on purview and AI, and and just just get on with it. Just be prompt about it. <laughs> Microsoft Purview Compliance <laughs> Portal, Microsoft Purview AI Hub prompts and responses. Man, they why do they put the whole in anyway product name in there? Uh, this is MC eight seven three seven four seven. Um, so the. And we've talked about this, I believe, but the the Microsoft Purview AI Hub is the place where you can look at how Purview is your compliance friend in Microsoft <laughs> 365. Yeah. And the AI Hub is part of Purview. It's a new feature that allows uh, you to take a look at how AI is being used in your organization, not just Copilot. Um, however, this message here is about... Um, they're introducing the capability of seeing user prompts, basically interaction with Copilot, user prompts and the responses from Copilot for Microsoft 365. So um, before you get all up in arms, you do have to have a special role to be able to see this, which is the Content Explorer Content Viewer role. Um, so this is a privileged account to be able to do it. Not everybody's been able to go in there and see this. But uh, I, honestly, for me, I think this is a very important development in the life of Copilot. I know it's in Purview, and I know you know it's on that side. But frankly, no, having no real insights on how 
prompts are being used and how the uh, responses are coming back and you know how that is progressing within an organization the maturity of using the product as well as what you know uh, similarly to how Microsoft Search, you know, you should have somebody that's monitoring that to see what people are looking for so that you can, you know, make things more available if, if uh, people are not be able to find it. Similarly, in that, in that way, for Copilot, for, for you to understand how it's being used in your organization, I think this is a, a, a big deal um, for organizations that are just trying to get a handle on how is it being used, how can we improve it, um, you know, things like, Daryl, you know this, you can create custom copilots mm -hmm. and that are focused on certain content, for instance. You know, maybe, you know, you're seeing what's going on and, and maybe you need to develop some custom copilots uh, to help with that. So on the productivity side, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing, as well as on the compliance side, which is the, you know, probably the real driver here, but um, mm. is around... Are people trying to use it in a nefarious way? Um, but, um, you know, understanding how people are, are using it, I think, is, is very important for organizations. Do you agree? I do agree. Uh, I think you've explored some interesting uses for it that uh, when, when you're looking at it, maybe you can pull together some trends and themes around what people are uh, prompting for and whether you've got the time as a co-pilot prompt admin and purview to to take a look and say oh I see yeah no the prompts aren't really responding as expected that means we need to put some more effort in and around this area of our information it could be that you know like how the, the whole tidy up effort that that organizations are going through or will be going through it's going to be an ongoing thing but it could be like, ah, this is a really important area of prompting. Imagine a prompt cloud. I'm on product building space here. <laughs> but, you know, like that kind of word cloud of a lot of people are prompting in this thing. So let's put our efforts there to try and make sure it's a good experience. Yeah. Um, you know, we're envisioning what we would like for it to be. Unfortunately, we don't see what it's going to be. We need screenshots, people. <laughs> um we need to make for, that a soundbite where I just push a button which says... Screenshot needed. We need we screenshots, need a, people. <laughs> we, 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 we need screenshots, people. You know, I'm thinking, you know, one of, like a stamp, of, you know, an electronic stamp of... <laughs> screenshot needed. Now um, we're envisioning. <laughs> yes. Uh, there is a link that I think is pretty important about the known issues there oh. toward the bottom that details what prompts or scenarios, specifically in, in apps, where those won't be captured. Um, so some mm -hmm. of the ones that are highlighted word, Excel, PowerPoint teams, whiteboard forms in different ways. I'm not just, I'm not saying all of those. I'm just, uh, as well, far as interactions, share I'm one. saying, what's an example. Um, so the first one that's listed is in word, you know, when in you click the inspire me button, mm -hmm. you know, user selects that that's not going to be captured because there is no prompt, right? <laughs> that you didn't prompt anything. So it can't capture yeah. a prompt. Um, in white copilot for whiteboard, it's not going to capture the prompt or a response. Um, so just known these are known issues for um, the preview, and it sounds like maybe they're going to be known issues when it goes live as well. Hmm. Um, so just know that that's the case right now. Um, but it's it's rolling out uh, public preview now, but general availability looking at late November. So this is one of those things, and we're actually going to talk about here in a couple messages something that we talked about in in a preview kind of um, aspect, but now is rolling out. This is giving you the idea. So public preview means you can turn it on and, and use it, uh, but it's not being pushed to you, right? So uh, I thought this was important enough. We thought it was important enough to talk about now uh, while it's in preview. Um, so it's rolling out, uh, and you can turn it on with in public preview now. Um, let's do a quick uh, message. Um, please let me in. Um, I am who I, I'm a human and okay. I really, really yeah. want you to cover this next message. You've, you've captured my attention. 
<laughs> Capture verification for anonymous meeting participants, MC875061. Daniel, have you attended any meetings lately where, and I asked this question exactly the right time when you're taking a drink of your cup, have you attended any meetings lately where uh, there is a third party something that is attending the meeting and ready to take notes, but not yeah, the absolutely. person you invited? It, yeah? Absolutely, and it, it's actually a little alarming. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the rise of the, the AI note taker, uh, and fine, I guess, if you can get permission for that, but I think what's happening now a lot is people are just doing it without asking. Uh, it isn't really a social norm yet. It's also yeah, not really giving you the option to... Um, Block and control that process. Well, th this this is what it's about, right? There's going to be a capture option for when allowing anonymous people to join meetings. So a bot like that, which is trying to take notes or record and transcribe things for you, won't be able to just join. And that'll take care of that. Uh, so it, it's going to be an option. Tenants can enable this feature in the Teams Admin Center. I, I Imagine it would be something you do at a tenant level, not meeting by meeting, expecting a organizer to turn it on every meeting. Um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it, it's it's feature is off by default. It's available as an option and can be put into various meeting policies. General availability. Think, Sorry, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say though, wouldn't it be nice, maybe, that as a meeting organizer in the meeting, you actually could turn it off. What if hmm. you're you're testing, or you want, or someone there is a valid reason to have, you know, a an exception, a, an exception yeah. for a third party app. Um, again, we don't have any screenshots. Uh, <laughs> however, it would be nice to have some sort of a capability of doing an exception so that it, things could testing or or whatever. That's, mm. that's all I was going to say. So third-party genuine apps, also malicious bots. And so they, these things are, it's happening. All right, and that is a generally available worldwide beginning early October, expected complete mid-October. We're now getting into our sponsored section, <laughs> all, about, all about brand. And mm -hmm. we're going to have to pair up some of these messages. Daniel, yep. uh, tell us why we need to do that before you... Yeah, get into so the messages. So we, we basically have three type, three, um, I don't want to say messages, but it is delivering a message. Mm. Um, <laughs> so we have three messages, uh, but they're doubled up each. And it, it's because of the whole relationship between SharePoint and Viva Connections and, yep. you know, ha having the brand center be the place to, to work on that. Um, this was the... Uh, let me let me talk. So the two that I'm going to cover, that are kind of the standard, uh, or the the um, high level, what's happening, is the first one is Viva Connections, Microsoft Viva Connections, manage your organization's brand in the new brand center, MC eight seven six two eight seven, and then the second one is Microsoft SharePoint, manage your organization's brand in the new brand center, MC eight seven six two eight eight. So it's the same message. Um, and so just know that if you're looking at one, you're, you're seeing both, but, um, this is, I, I mentioned previously two messages ago that, um, that was a preview. Well, we talked about brand center when it was in preview and mm -hmm. now this is, it is going to be rolled out next month. Um, and so here we are talking about it. Um, so we're not going to go too in depth on it because we already did that. Uh, there is some improvements between, you know, before we talked about it and now, uh, as you would imagine. Um, but this message goes through how you set up the brand center and get it going for your organization, um, as well as talking about, you know, um, the app and, and for the brand center. But, um, this is where you will centralize the management for um, your brand, aptly named the Brand Center. Um, 
So managing your the way you're going to create themes for your sites and for Viva Connections for your um, colors and all that kind of stuff, This, as well as more. Right? There's more planned here, I'm sure, um, for Brand Center uh, in the future, you know, down the road. So um, the... I said public preview. It was started before summer uh, in the northern hemisphere um, in early April, uh, but rolling out targeted release September, early September, so soonish, you know, in the next uh, week or two, uh, completed by mid September. And the general availability worldwide is mid September through mid October. Um, so, those are two messages. Um, and man, I, I covered those so efficiently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Good luck for uh, me, right? Uh, right. <laughs> but our next few are uh, bolts on uh, for the Brand Center. It's talking about yeah. features coming to the Brand Center. So, Daryl, uh, give us an idea, you know, c- kind of maybe theme it up for us. Okay. We will start there once I find it. <laughs> That was come on. That was a good. Like, no, that no, was it. Was good. It was good. Theme. It was good. Yeah. Okay. So across again, this the theme for this is that these two messages will be for Viva Connections and for SharePoint. Create themes for SharePoint and Viva Connections in Brand Center. It's MC eight seven six two eight one, and then a slightly shorter title, but covering the same content. Microsoft SharePoint create brands. Themes in the Brand Center, uh, MC876285. So, themes. Uh, what what some of us might have created uh, using SharePoint and what is the... Um, there was a site there where you could pop in a, a, a hex code and it had come out with... Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I, I do. Yeah, and it would it would generate the, the PowerShell code for you or the, the whatever else. You know what, Daryl... I- why couldn't you mention this in the live show that we do? We did uh, this week, and if you would like to help us sort messages and pick out the messages we're going to cover, you can join us live. It's Friday afternoon, um, U.S. time, Saturday morning, uh, the New Zealand time. New Zealand uh, <laughs> time. Uh, why couldn't you have brought that up, Daryl? We were talking about this, and I could have looked it up before. You now. could have. Man. But – you know, I can motion and, and and do a verbal interpretive dance and just say that it, we used to do this manually. Now it's going to be something we can do in Brand Center with a nice UI that you can go to the Brand Center, say, I want to create a brand with a theme, and you can choose the color that you want to use for your brand, um, and that will be made available. It's the theme generator tool. Theme generator tool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep. Uh, did all sorts of things like checking about accessibility and whether these colors go nicely together. Oh, well, rather, from an accessibility point of view, not a design point of view. So Brand Center is going to lay a degree this from a theme perspective, and those themes will be available once you've created them in the traditional change the look experience. If you're a site admin, you can go into change the look, choose the theme. Very nice. Um, so that's the same across SharePoint and Viva Connections to an extent. Like I think, yeah, when we talk about Viva Connections, there's, there's the, uh, the app experience. Yeah. Right, so our next message, uh, again, it's for both of those Viva Connections, SharePoint experiences. Uh, Microsoft Viva introducing custom fonts for Viva Connections desktop, EMC 876286. And... Similarly, a little bit further up the list, Microsoft SharePoint introducing custom fonts, MC877312. This, again, it was available in, this was available in preview, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could could choose fonts, but you um, couldn't upload them. Yeah, but now we're able to upload them. Yeah. Yeah, So the preview experience of this, as I said, just recapping, uh, there were some fonts that you could, select from a, a small list. This was, I guess, just testing the waters as part of preview. Uh, and those fonts would be available. If you scroll right down to the bottom of the message, there was a list of places where those fonts would appear. So, you know, site header, header, text web parts, uh, image web parts, hero web parts, all sorts of places 
lots of parts. Um, <laughs> um, and now the the good part of this is that you'll be able to upload your own. Right? You can put them into, I think it's a font pairing, so like a primary font and a secondary font, and that's part of the font family that you create. And, um, and then there's also a, a few additional uh, updates around where the font, the new custom fonts will appear, countdown mm -hmm. timers, events, highlighted content. So they're really stretching it across that full range of where you would normally see text. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think this is probably a, a, a very exciting thing for, for uh, the communicators and the brand people within the organization love to, to use their custom fonts to give um, the organization its identity. Any thoughts on these two messages, Daniel, before you continue on? Well, the only thing I want to kind of highlight is that, you know, the fonts, the messages are slightly different for Viva and for SharePoint because, okay. you know, Viva doesn't have all those web parts, right? Um, right. So they're, they're... Good point. Which, well, which maybe maybe you shouldn't use but which, it. Which I mean, Viva are you talking I mean, about? I mean, Viva Desktop, right? Yeah. Viva Connections Desktop, um, not... Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, Anyway, so they're just slightly different in that aspect. I, you said, you know, communicators, you know, uh, would love this. Um, I often work with communicators, like people who work in communications or HR that have that role of, of mm. communicating with employees and, and delivering message and everything. I, this is an area where I just don't get it. I mean, I, I understand I'm not the smartest um, feller. I get it. Um, so not a I question of intelligence, Daniel. I, I don't know. I just don't get this. It's a I don't question of understand. sophistication. Maybe yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. a sophisticated person. Or Maybe. I just don't understand custom fonts. Like, what is the big... Because we used to do this in SharePoint on-prem, mm. and, it, and it, was, it, was, it just wasn't great, in my opinion. It wasn't a great experience. It wasn't great. Like, why are we doing that? Why are we spending so much time and focus and energy on custom fonts. It only matters to those communicators. It doesn't matter to the people who are reading it. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, mm. In my opinion, it just, you know, for the vast majority of people, we want to read the words and get the message and move on. We don't care that it's got squiggly F's and, and, you know, an L that looks so cute. I, I don't care. Just tell me the thing. Custom fonts are just not my, th anyway. I'll get off my soapbox now and I'll leave you be. I just You did say in in our message sorting live stream that there was a soapbox involved. I, I just don't I mean I get it. I yeah. understand it, but I don't get it. I really mm. don't understand why people would spend so much effort in now on Microsoft side, I understand why they did it because they get so much pressure on custom fonts, custom fonts, we need them. And I get it. I understand why it was done. I just don't understand why all the people were asking for it. And I get it. Oh, we got to have our custom fonts because that's our brand. That, I don't know. I, know. I, I, I appreciate a good custom font. And, you know, uh, I'll put the challenge out there um, for the, the first organization that chooses to make a custom font family with Comic Sans in various <laughs> different sizes. Um, share there, the, there share are... it with us. We might even feature it on the show if you're lucky. <laughs> Uh, there are now with custom fonts, there are limits to what kind of font families and stuff you can use. But anyway, um, hopefully I haven't excluded comic sans. I, I bet they or have. wingdings. Wingdings Just make everyone um, type everything in wingdings on their internet. Awesome. Anyway. Amazing. Uh, well, look, Daniel, there's, mm. there's only really one other message in our list to cover cause mm. that was pretty chunky. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Tell us about what's happening with tidying up our team's uh, references in chat. Yeah, this one t is interesting. Teams copy slash paste of messages does not include timestamp and message author name. MC878422. But it does. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it, it is. Actually, it doesn't because we'll get to that. They've already rolled it out and they say, sorry. Um. So before, when you copied and pasted a message uh, in Teams, 
copied a team's message and pasted it, it would put in metadata as part of all that of who, who posted it originally and the timestamp and all that. And according to Microsoft, they have heard loud and clear that this is bad. So they said, fine, we will remove that. So now when you copy a message and paste it, it will not include the author name and it will not include timestamp. Um, now, Daryl and I disagree, surprise, on this because I felt like it would be nice to actually keep author because when you're pasting, having um, showing who actually said it originally makes sense to me. Um, I say we disagree. I actually, I think Daryl made a very good point and which is Daryl, which is that if you don't have it, maybe like, and the example here is I've got a conversation where Sally said something and I want to, she's so smart, point someone to that, but also want to mention Sally. So I say at Sally said, and then, and that way she'll get a notification She'll know that we're talking about her <laughs> and her yeah. conversation, which which makes sense. I think that is actually the way you sh you should do it. You should be communicating that way. You shouldn't be copying and pasting somebody's message and not letting them know that you did that. Uh, so it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, now Microsoft is very sorry. I mean, they Are didn't they? say very. Are they? But they but says available now, and we apologize for not communicating prior to the rollout occurring. Um, I don't accept your apology. So, um, maybe send me a, um, an additional license this year as a, <laughs> as a, anyway, sorry. <laughs> you get an extra month free or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it, you have it now. So maybe take in what Daryl said to heart that it actually, you know, making, when you do this at mention people, so they know you're talking about them hmm. <laughs> or you're, you're, reposting what they said yeah yeah we, we did have another like uh feature request i think on that was maybe if you wanted mm -hmm. to provide or display some of that referential information that it could be there on, on mouse hover you know, yeah. almost like alternate text over the top of but that would take quite a bit of development i'm sure yeah so yeah. that's it that that's is it. our show um really appreciate you i will say we talked a whole lot more about not just these messages. Well, we, uh, we said all the things for these messages, but we talked about a lot of other messages. Yeah. On our message sorting show, the live show that we did on oh, Friday show. that we've already talked. I, I mean, we we did. In yeah. fact, we, we dived pretty deep on a few of them that we didn't cover. Only because, you know, frankly, the people that show up, they get to tell us, hey, cover that or not. So... Mm -hmm. Um, as well as, you know, we, we actually, we have to trim things down. So if you'd like to hear more, you'd like to get more in depth coverage, make sure you join the live show, uh, every week. You know what I like about that, Daniel, uh, and we've had this experience with, with a few that get quite lively in the chat is that we, we actually do yeah. get to talk more across the industry about what, what we think yeah. and what the impacts are. So I think that's good. Yeah, too. That's, it, that's my highlight I, for it. Absolutely, I agree with you. It, and and getting other people's opinions, frankly, I'll, 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 I'm being transparent here. Um, there was a couple of episodes, uh, message sorting episodes, the live episode at Go, where I was like, I don't think we should cover this. And I looked over in chat, and there were like three people that said, "Yes, you should cover it." And I'm like, I guess we're covering it. <laughs> Oops. So, um, you know, we, we try to you know give our input and provide value here and uh you can you can do that too uh join you us can uh, for too. the live show yeah so that yep. was 347 for this week indeed thank See you, you next week for being here yes yeah bye, -bye for now bye <laughs>